Hello, everybody. Mike Johnson, application engineer with Katrain Broadcast USA. I want to talk to you today about low power broadcast. Now, when you think of Katrain in the U.S. market for low power broadcast, you normally think of our Scala brand. Our Scala brand has been in the U.S. market uh, since 1954. Um, that our Scala brand, uh, when, I, when I was young in my infancy here at Katrain, I had the privilege to, to travel to the NTA with Ellis Feinstein a few times. And Ellis uh, gave me a little history on Scala. Um, when Ellis' early days in broadcast translators, he uh, had to rely on consumer-grade RX antennas. He said that high-power antennas of the time were just not practical for low-power applications. And that's what led him to suit the fine Scala and then buy Scala and, and build it to what it is today. Um, he wanted an antenna that checked the boxes. He wanted an antenna that was high quality. He wanted an antenna that was robust. He wanted an antenna that performed well. And he wanted an antenna that was practical for that low power market. And that's what he turned Scala into. Now we, we build our Scala product, design our Scala product around those principles. And when you think of our Scala product as far as low power FM product, you think of our FM directionals our Yagi antennas, our log periodic antennas, our FMV dipoles. One thing you don't think of is a circular polarized FM side mount antenna. We've never designed a circular polarized FM side mount Omni here as far as our Scala product. And one of the reasons we haven't is because we have a sister company in Italy, Sira, that has an antenna that checks all those boxes. Uh, this is our FMC01, our Sira built FMC01 that is a robust well-performing, high-quality antenna that is practical for low-power FM market. Um, this antenna, I just want to take a little time to talk about this antenna. This antenna has a 716 DIN connector at the input. It's rated for up to 1.5 kilowatts. It's got stainless steel construction throughout. It's got a 40 millimeter or inch and 5 eighths stainless steel main boom and dipoles. Uh, the dipoles... The dipoles do break down to reduce that shipping cost, making it more practical for FM, low power FM. It checks that box. Um, these dipoles, the bottom stub of these dipoles are welded to that main boom. And I want to take a little time to talk about this weld. As you can see, that the, this weld is a TIG weld to that main boom. And if you've ever TIG welded, you know how hard it is to keep that heat control consistent. And you can see here, the heat control is consistent. You can see where the argon has cleaned the material. It's just an excellent weld. And that's, that adds to the craftsmanship. It checks that box as far as robust. It checks that box as far as high quality. Um, this antenna, these dipoles, again, I, I mentioned they break down for, uh, to, re, to, to make it more practical for that low power market. Uh, they're attached with stainless steel hardware. I've got the hardware removed on this dipole here so we can take a closer look at it. Um, it's a 40 millimeter tube. It has a solid stainless steel insert that, that protrudes into the, the extended end of the dipole and then also into the base of that dipole. And that's where that strength is in that dipole. The hardware does add to the strength, but it holds that insert in there to, to, to give it that strength, that robustness. Checks that box as far as robustness. Now, this antenna also has uh, on those dipole arms the lug that the feed strap uh, the feed point strap connects to is a welded to that boom, a TIG welded to that boom. It is not a clamp. It is welded to that boom. These feed straps are a C-channel stainless material. They're not a flat, flimsy strap. They are rigid, and they will serve you well. The feed point. The feed point is housed in this fiberglass radome. We do that for several reasons. This antenna, like I mentioned, is broadband. It has 16 megahertz with the uh, bandwidth. That broadbandedness and this feed point, this radon protecting that feed point from icing gives this thing excellent performance compared to a narrowband antenna in heavy icing conditions. Now, we won't sacrifice on that feed point. This is not additional. This is a standard product of this antenna. You will not buy one of these antennas without this feed point radon because we think it's crucial. Now, that feed point radon not only helps in icy environments, in a hot, humid, wet environment, it's going to reduce any kind of corrosion on that feed point. It's going to protect it in that nature. In a dry, arid desert, it's going to keep the UV rays off that critical feed point. And again, we won't sacrifice. We're not going to hit you with additional costs for this. This is rolled into the cost of this antenna. And uh, you see on this antenna, we have a matching section in here. We do that to give it even better performance. It checks that box of, of excellent performance. It's, it's broadband at 16 megahertz. It's spec'd better than 1.5 to 1 VSWR. 
Um, it's typically around 1.35 to 1. At worst case, um, a lot of areas in the, in the band are 1.2 to 1 or better. Um, this antenna, we thought of everything here. This antenna can be pressurized all the way out to the feed point if pressurization is available. If not, it can be ran unpressurized. Um, anywhere that, uh, like in these dipole stubs, anywhere that moisture condensation could occur, there is a weep hole, and they're all strategically placed in the bottom of the radome, in these stubs, where any kind of moisture that gets in those kind of areas can drain out. Um, this antenna, like any other FM side mount, as a standalone bay, is going to have about negative 3 dBD a gain. And if you have a fairly low power application, that's, that's practical. If, if you have transmitter power, ample transmitter power, that's practical. But we know, if, you know even to produce a 250-watt ERP, if you've got a single bay, um, you're going to have to have somewhere around 500 watts at the input. And we know that's not always feasible. Um, once you consider line loss, you, if you have a filter within a system, I mean, you may have a 750 watt to one kilowatt transmitter to drive this thing. And we know a lot of low power applications, that's just not practical. So a lot of guys like to stack these in multiple bay arrays to increase the gain and be able to run your system more efficiently with less transmitter power. Now, we've seen uh, selling these, we've seen that the two bay option is very popular. It gets you up there around unity gain. Um, it makes it a lot easier as far as price point on the transmitter. Um, it does add some cost into the uh, antenna portion of it. Now, we have tried to make that even more practical, that two-bay configuration. We've put together a package uh, to make that two-bay configuration even more practical for our low-power FM broadcasters. Let's take a second and look at that two-bay array. I've got this two-bay array pushed outside so we can take a quick close look at it. Now, this two-bay array, when it ships for a medium power application, ships with a power divider that has a 7 ATI flange in the input and is rated up to 3 kilowatts of transmit power. Now, if you have a 250-watt ERP, that 3 kilowatt transmitter power rating is not always practical. So to make this more practical, we have a package for our LPFM customers. That, that LPFM package has, consists of the two bays, and it utilizes a coax stacking harness that we developed through our Scala line of products that's broadband and rated up to 750 watts of input power. This will allow you to put one or two 250 watt ERP stations into this two bay array. It has a 716th den female at the input, clearly mabel labeled input. It has 716th den males that mate with the antennas, clearly labeled antenna number one for the lower bay and antenna number two for the upper bay. This stacking harness is kept in stock, is readily available with the base. So we can typically ship out a two bay array in one to three days after receipt of order. Now, this stacking harness is also very versatile. It's a parallel feed system that maintains 50 ohms throughout. So we can accommodate any kind of base spacing. Currently, I have this set up for a full wave spacing. We can reduce that full wave spacing to 7 eighths wave or 3 quarter wave or whatever spacing you need to fit within your area on that tower. Or if you need to reduce those downward radiation levels, we can do so. Now, this package is very practical for that LPFM market. But we don't only offer these FMCO1s for this low power package. We can also accommodate medium power with our standard power dividers. We can stack these FMCO1s up to eight bay configurations and typically up to five kilowatts input power with our medium power line. If you have a high power line, we have a big brother to this FMCO1, our FMCO6 antenna, that has an inch and five ATI flange at the input and is rated up to 12 and a half kilowatts per bay. We can stack those in multiple bay configurations to accommodate one or multiple high power stations. Now, thank you for taking the time to walk through this LPFM package for, with me today. I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do, reach out to us and we'll, we'll get you more information on it. Um, you can reach out to us by phone at 541-879-2300. Or you can shoot us an email at support-usa at katrine-bca.com or hit that contact button on our LinkedIn page. Thanks again for taking the time to walk through this. I hope you like what you've seen and we'll talk at you later.